When you're buying a car, Britain's favorite papa is Auto Trader. Auto Trader. Auto Trader. When you're buying a car, Britain's favorite papa is Auto Trader. If you're planning to buy or sell a used car and you have those nightmares about dubious dealers financially ripping you off and generally you coming away with a bad deal, then let me now try and ease your mind. In Britain, the used vehicle car market is the biggest source of complaints to trading standards officers. But the risks can be greatly reduced if you go into situations with your eyes open, you're never tempted to overstretch your budget and you seek advice from professionals to carry out independent checks. A lot of the heartache can be avoided. That's what this video is now going to show you. Take the time to buy. Be more aware of the choices you have before you take that big step. Auto Trader. If you're seriously considering buying a used car, you first need to decide what kind of car you're looking for. Is it going to be a hatchback, a saloon, one of those people carriers, or an estate car? Perhaps you're after a four-wheel drive model, or maybe you've got your heart set on a sports car. The important thing is, what is that car's main function going to be? Whatever you decide, it is a good idea to make a short list indicating preferred make and model specification. Study the market. You can discover what's selling well and the prices to expect by buying magazines such as Auto Trader, which will give you current examples. Check out the cars that you like by going along to dealerships and having a good look. Find out if the model you're after does have the boot capacity that you want, the space that your family needs, and the comfort that you insist on. And don't forget color. It's an important factor when you come to resell your car. Generally speaking, try to avoid the extremes. Bland colors as well as the short-lived fashion colors may not be such a wise choice. Red and metallic paint finishes are usually a much safer bet. If you fancy a higher level of specification, do consider the extra cost that that might mean. Find out from friends and workmates what they think of your choice. And if you're fortunate to know a reliable car enthusiast, get them to help you out especially when it comes to the inspection and the all-important test drive. You may have noticed that diesel engines have grown in popularity recently. This is probably because they have the advantage of lasting that bit longer than similar petrol models, around 200,000 miles against 150,000 without serious problems. They offer better fuel economy as well, which may be an important consideration. But the environmental issue is still disputed, so a small petrol engine might be a better decision. But that will all depend upon the type of driving that you're likely to do. By the way, if you're looking at fuel economy in particular, don't be guided solely by the official government figures. The urban figure is only for basic reference. The best way to do it is if you have friends with similar cars, ask them what consumption figures they get on average. To keep a car at its best, both in performance and economy, it's important to get it serviced regularly. It's certainly worth your while checking out the service record of any car that you're considering buying. Service bills just go up and up, so you should check out the typical servicing costs. That includes the labor costs and the price of parts. Now, there can be a lot of difference. For instance, a car with long major service intervals, say between 9 and 12,000 miles, can actually be a cost saving, whereas a less common mark may need servicing more often. You should also be aware that the parts for less popular models or for a car older than 10 years may be harder to get hold of and therefore will be more costly. You must balance the cost of the car against the cost of maintenance later and don't risk increasing your budget at the expense of servicing. When you're shopping around for your car, don't forget insurance. And before you fall in love with the car of your dreams, do find out what you could be paying to insure it. If your heart is still set on that sporty model, contact some specialist insurers who should be able to offer you a good quote. And don't forget to mention if your car's garaged or it's fitted with a security device such as the tracking system Trackback, you may be eligible for a discount. Similarly, older drivers with a good track record may find they don't have to pay such a high premium.
for a sports model. And there are some excellent deals around in the hot hatch used car market. Now the off-road sector is said to be the next area where premiums will rise. So beware if you're already on a tight budget and some of the free insurance offers may not be so tempting when you find you're forced to sell because of an unexpected second year premium. Insurance premiums are based on a range of factors with the ratings reflecting safety, security, likely repair bills and the cost of spare parts. This way the lower the rating, the less expensive the car will be to run, the safer it will be and the harder it will be to steal. So talk to reputable companies and make sure that you get the best cover for your circumstances. Take a look at the packages like the Prudential Complete Car Cover, which includes insurance and breakdown cover. The insurance market is highly competitive, so do shop around. But remember, never take risks with your insurance. As you're probably aware, car safety and security are becoming increasingly important. The most popular cars with the casual thieves are actually older models which are considerably easier to steal. If your choice of car doesn't already have an alarm or immobilizer, you might consider getting one fitted or investing in a mechanical security device such as a crook lock. Of course, any of these features will cost money, but they will certainly add to the value of your car in the long run. Rear seat belts have been compulsory since 1987. Now, they're obviously beneficial to safety. If your car doesn't have rear belts, you should consider getting them fitted and do so as soon as possible for the safety of your passengers. If you've got young children, don't forget to look at the mountings for baby seats and do check that belts are long enough to hold the front-facing baby carriers. When it comes to paying for your car, the last thing you want to do is to make the wrong decision. Choosing the right method of payment will give you peace of mind and probably save you money. To begin with, decide what you can afford, including the additional costs of insurance, road tax and fuel. If you're going to need extra finance, first decide what size deposit you can afford and then shop around for the low finance. And remember, if you're selling a car which is still on finance, do keep your loan company informed of your actions and get a redemption figure from them. A word of warning here about 0% finance deals. Some of those require a large deposit to be paid and you may well be asked to pay off the outstanding amount within one year. That, of course, will mean some hefty monthly payments. Now, you can have a financial check carried out on a used car by contacting HPI Auto Data. They'll tell you about any finance Hello. agreements on uh, the car. Yes, Always be careful to steer clear of dubious yeah, finance yeah. schemes. If in doubt, a reputable bank loan would be a safer option. But remember, never ever part with your money unless you're 300% certain. When you set about buying a used car, make sure you research the subject thoroughly. That way, the more you know, the better your negotiating skills will be. So get hold of the motoring magazines and compare the specification of a standard new model with the car that you're being offered. Likewise, keep an eye on the price of new models, because that will affect the price of the old models. And if you get back issues of the motoring magazines, you can find out how the car was first received when it was launched. If you like the technical stuff, you can go down to your local library and get hold of the Haynes manuals. There are four ways of buying a used car. And believe me when I say that the worst is to try and buy one from a close relative or friend. It will ruin a great relationship. But if they've got a car for sale and you think it's the one for you, go for it. But don't skimp on the recommended steps. Proceed with caution. Buying from a dealer might be your choice. A good used car dealer will ensure that the car is of a high standard and well presented. This should include servicing the vehicle and repairing surface damage caused by stone chips. They'll usually ensure that the vehicle has been fully valeted, provide a vehicle history check and a new MOT certificate when necessary and an after sales warranty. Most reputable car dealers will be happy to justify any premium they charge on the price by assuring you of trouble free motoring. It's up to you to judge if they are as reliable and helpful as you'd wish. Check with friends, ask around, find out if other people have had a good experience when dealing with that garage. And as with any other option, just make sure that you've done your homework, know what you want and know your price. If you're confident about your abilities, you could consider buying at auction. But beware, there are pitfalls if you're not clued up. The pressure to make fast decisions is extreme. And remember, you'll be up against the professionals for the bargains. 
I mean, there's no question about it. You can save money compared to the average dealer forecourt. But our hurried decision could well be a wrong one. You'll be pleased to know that most good auction companies recognize the concerns of the novice private buyer, and they provide a little breathing time to check the car over. They also sometimes offer warranty. If you're tempted to try these auctions, visit a few sessions as an onlooker, first of all, and familiarize yourself with the routine. Read up on all the conditions of sale beforehand. Arrive early and draw up a short list of the vehicles you're interested in. Check out the car on the selling floor for a final once-over before the bidding begins. And listen carefully to the auction. Whatever you do, stick to your budget. If you're successful, you simply give your details and a cash deposit to the clerk at the rostrum. A bill of sale is prepared, service charge added, and you must settle up with cash, banker's draft, or building society check the following day. Away from the hurly-burly of the auction rooms and the dealer's forecourt, where there are higher prices, lies the private market. With care, you can safely buy a car privately and save money. Thousands of cars are listed every week in auto trader publications and other local newspapers. The vast majority of private sellers are people just like yourself. If you do your research and keep an eye out for the professional, the private market is a good option. You'd be wise to spend some money finding the right car. Pounds spent on magazines and time taken to talk to the experts will pay off when you find the right car and avoid a bad buy. Is there a good time to buy a used car? Well, the used car sector is constantly getting an influx of new cars. September's a good time because that's when the whole market is boosted due to the changeover in registration plate in August. If it's that convertible you're after, don't try buying it during the summer. That's when demand is at its highest and so are the prices. Instead, look for your favorite convertible in winter time. That'll also give you a chance to check out any seasonal problems like leaking roofs. However much you're eagerly anticipating your new car, if anything at all makes you feel unsure of the car or its seller, don't hesitate, just walk away. Be cautious of sellers using mobile phone numbers. This could indicate a dealer. And if you're told to phone at a certain time, although it's not unheard of, it could spell trouble. So use your judgment. Sometimes you can tell on the phone if a person is talking complete and utter rubbish. So spend some time chatting first before making an appointment to view. Try to find out about their personal circumstances. Jot them down. You can double check those later. And once you have an appointment, never go and view a car on your own, both for your own personal safety as well as to safeguard your financial interests. When you get there, take a good look over any documents and look out for those points you jotted down about the seller's circumstances. Were they correct? Give the car a thorough check over and ask questions about anything that bothers you. It might help you to decide later if you make notes as you go along. You can check out any queries about mileage, servicing and any accidents or damage by telephoning the previous owners. Always take time to decide. It's your choice. You're under no obligation and you shouldn't feel under any pressure. Don't be ruled by your emotions when you go to view a vehicle. Get an objective view by taking along a friend. In fact, if you're not mechanically minded, make sure you take someone who is. Try not to make an appointment to view the vehicle if it's dark or raining, because you're bound to miss things. If that's unavoidable, then you should think about making an appointment for an independent vehicle inspection. To take your test drive, well, you'll need your driving license, you'll need the appropriate insurance cover note, and of course you'll need your friend. Tell your friend to sit in the back, because there they can listen out for any strange noises or feel any strange vibrations. If you've found out all you can about the make of vehicle and gone through the Haynes manual, then you'll be quite aware of what to expect under the bonnet. But remember, if you want a really good look, you'll need to wear some old clothes. Let's start with the exterior. Unless you know the car has major plastic body parts, like for example the bonnet on the Citroen BX, a clever trick is to run a small magnet over the main panels. This is a quick way of locating any areas that may have been damaged and badly repaired. 
Look carefully for slight mismatches in colour or dubious paint surfaces. The chances are that the car has been resprayed, possibly due to an accident or corrosion. Don't be afraid to ask about it. Other giveaways are rippled body panelling or uneven gaps between the panels. Again, maybe a sign of an accident or even that the car has been built from several crashed models. This is known as cut and shut. If you take a uh, torch with you, you'll be able to crouch down, have a good look underneath for any rust or any other damage you can see there. Particularly take a look at the jacking points because they can show an early indication of corrosion. And also look out for oil leaks splattered across the underside of the floor pan. That could indicate an expensive repair to come. Now there are several basic checks you can carry out both inside and out. First, turn on the engine, make sure it's cold first of all. Lift the radiator cap and if you detect oil in the water or you see any bubbling coming up through the water, there could be a head gasket problem. Second, lift the oil filler cap and put your hand over the opening. If you feel pressure, that could mean worn pistons. And check the oil level with the dipstick because if it's unusually high or you see any water in the oil, could be another head gasket problem. Smell the oil. If you detect the smell of fuel, avoid this car. Then look around the engine for signs of oil and water leaks. By turning the ignition key one notch, all the dash warning lights should come on. With the engine ticking over, listen out for clattering or rattles. That means that some of the engine components could be worn. Next, look at the inside of the car's exhaust. It should be a sandy grey in colour. If it's black, there might well be an engine problem. If the car has an assortment of tyres fitted, you may find that the owner hasn't really cared for their car. Also, scuffed alloy wheels or wheel trims are constantly caused through careless parking, and that may well have damaged the car's steering in some way. But more importantly, regular curbing of alloy wheels can cause tiny little fractures to appear. That could eventually see the wheel breaking up whilst you're actually driving the car. Inside the vehicle, lift the carpets and check the condition underneath them. Signs of wear and tear generally will tell you how well a car has been looked after. If the car has an unusual array of keys, they may well have been added after a major accident or theft. Always be thorough. It will pay off in the end. And never, ever be hurried. There are plenty more cars out there if you're not 100% certain. Before going for the test drive, don't forget to have your insurance cover note and your driving license with you. Check all around from the driving position and investigate the switches and the instruments. Test everything. Open the windows, the bonnet release, the boot. Check the heating and ventilation system. Because anything that irritates you now will of course drive you completely mad once you own the car. Plan your test route out well before you get to the seller's house and try and work out a route of about 10 miles. That's a normal sort of distance for test drives, going over roads that you would regularly, normally use. Now, as you're driving along, listen out for the gear changes. If you hear any clonking noises, that could be bad news. Keep an eye on the dashboard as you're going along because you need to keep an eye on the uh, engine temperature and the oil pressure gauges. Also, make sure you try the car in traffic and also on dual carriageways. As you accelerate, listen out closely for more clonking noises or anything as you slow down. Try a hill start to give the clutch a go and gently try out the brakes. And as you try those brakes, feel for any vibrations that come up through the steering wheel or through the brake pedal itself. If the car has a catalyst fitted, Listen closely when you're cornering. If you hear a tinkling sound coming from the exhaust, it could be a problem. And catalysts are expensive items to replace. They are also easily damaged by just one tankful of leaded fuel. When you get back to the seller's house, get someone to press the accelerator whilst you listen for any misfires. Excessive exhaust smoke means the fuel system probably needs regulating, and that, of course, will mean an MOT failure. Switch the engine off and take a look under the bonnet. As with any used car purchase, always beware of covert car dealers. They're the sort of people who don't want you to come round to their house, or when you do go round to the house, they've got several cars parked in the driveway, or they have an inconsistency in their stories. The golden rule is that if someone cannot show you the documents, run away fast.
If you can see the documents, check everything. Make sure that the car belongs to the seller. And by cross-checking, make sure the mileage is genuine. In fact, make sure that the colour, the registration, the mileage and the name of the seller all tie up. Ask to see the servicing records. And if there are pages missing from the service books, leave the car alone. You can contact HPI Autodata for a check on the car's financial status. They'll tell you if there's any finance outstanding. And they can also flag up stolen models. If the windows have been etched with either a registration number or a vehicle identification number, then double check these against either the number plate or the VIN plate as it's known under the bonnet. If you and the experts have checked and double checked the car, its documents, the seller, if you've slept on your decision, and you still feel confident about this car, then go ahead, make it yours. By the time you're prepared to negotiate, you should know what your financial limitations are. And if you've done your research correctly, you'll know what price you should be paying for the vehicle. When you check the car over, you should have made a mental note of the features which would affect your bargaining power. For instance, was the specification lower than you would have liked? If there was an in-car stereo fitted, was it included in the price? And more importantly, is it still the same system? Or has it been changed for a lower specification model? Armed with your knowledge, you'll be in a good position to bargain, and the seller will see this. Make a realistic offer. Don't be silly or you'll be considered a complete time waster. Be prepared to negotiate, and never promise what you can't afford. Even then, don't make an instant decision. Tell the seller that you'd rather sleep on it. As well as giving you time to think, a keen seller will probably be in touch the next day and may even discuss a drop in price. And remember, there are plenty more cars in the car park. Ugh. Once a deal has been finalised and both parties are willing to go ahead, you'll need to arrange payment, either by a banker's draft or cash. Now make sure the seller gives you a receipt with their full name and address on it. This should detail exactly what you're buying, the precise mileage, registration number, any accessories, the body condition and the amount paid. This will prove you bought the vehicle in good faith if you do have any problems with it later on. But bear in mind that no matter how good your research, there will always be an element of risk. Before going to pick up your new car, you will have arranged sufficient insurance coverage. It's also advisable to take out some kind of breakdown cover. National Breakdown offer a reputable service and at a good price. When you go to collect your car, check it over again before driving off. And do take a quick look at the fuel gauge. You'll probably find you need to get some petrol for it. If you're pleased with your purchase, let the seller know. Some car owners have been known to grow quite attached to their cars. On balance, it's better to sell your car first. That puts you in a stronger cash purchase position as a buyer. But selling your car may take some time. So the more you can do to make it attractive, the better. Think like a buyer would, and don't get emotional. Research your own car to find out its value and selling points. Further details on the seller's viewpoint, follow this. When you come to sell your car, the best thing you can do is to put yourself in the buyer's shoes. And by that I mean check out your car as they would. Get an idea of what it's worth by looking in Auto Trader for similar models. Even go and look at some for sale in your area to get a feel for the competition. And it's not even a bad idea to have an independent check done. That'll show up any problems there might be, because remember, a buyer could choose that as their option. And if your buyer arrives fully prepared, it's important that you are as well. Check that everything that is supposed to work does. You may need to replace some bulbs or fuses. Read the car's handbook for anything you're unsure about. And make sure that the tyres are in good condition. Whatever you do, don't attempt to cover up any faults. Find out if it's more cost effective to get a repair done properly than to lose the sale. Now keep the car clean inside and out by using good quality cleaning products or even consider a professional valet. Get any relevant documents in order beforehand. Preparing an information sheet on the car and combining that with copies of any documentation into a folder would be a very professional way of showing that you mean business. A prospective purchaser would be impressed and they could take it away with them. When you've looked around and listed all the benefits the car has, decide on the price you want. 
but be realistic. You should know what competition you're up against. If you decide to opt for a trade-in through a local dealer, just be aware that what you gain on price on the one hand, you could be losing out on the other. And a word about finance. If you are still paying for your car this way, it is important to keep the finance company informed about your intentions. Before advertising your car, even if you know it's reliable and a good buy, don't be tempted to sell it to a friend or to a relative because without a doubt, the smallest of problems is going to come back to you and it won't do your relationship any good at all. That aside, are there good or bad times to sell a car? Well, there are a lot of buyers about in September after the change in registration. But there are also a surprising number of cars to be had. So if you can, wait for a leaner month. Before you spend money and effort on advertising, find out who your target audience is. In other words, what sort of people will your car appeal to? Would it suit a young driver or is it a family car? You need to target your advert accordingly. Try applying some sophisticated marketing techniques. Then place your ad in Autotrader or your local newspaper. Remember that specialist magazines have an increased likelihood of finding a buyer because they have a better targeted audience. Don't just advertise your car, market your car. Blow the buyer's socks off. Once you've placed an ad, the phone should start to ring. So whatever you do, make sure that someone's around and available to answer the call with all the right information. Be open and friendly and establish a rapport with a potential buyer. Find out their interests and see if you have things in common. Try to weed out the time wasters by chatting to the person and establishing their level of interest. Take their name, their address, telephone number and call them back to check that they're genuine. Once you've arranged an appointment with a buyer, Consider your personal safety. Don't meet buyers on your own. And have someone with you when you go for a test drive. Always ask to see their driving license, and they should also bring with them, of course, an insurance cover note. After the test drive, by all means, invite them into your home to check the documents. But if you become at all suspicious of the buyer, then don't do business. Remember, it's your car. Don't be forced into selling it. When you've come to some agreement and are happy to sell, Prepare a bill of sale, giving your name and address, the car you're selling, its condition, the mileage, and the price being paid. This will protect you as a good faith seller. Ask the buyer for cash or a banker's draft, which cannot be cancelled. Be sure to bank any check promptly and await clearance before handing over the keys. When the buyer comes to collect his new car, make sure it still looks good by washing it. Put a new air freshener into it and make sure the fuel tank is at least a quarter full. When you've said your farewells to the car, you can of course set about buying its replacement. Follow the advice given in section one. So that's how it's done. With attention to detail, planning, and a certain amount of caution, the thought of buying or selling a used car doesn't seem half so risky, does it? Just remember you have options. You should never feel pressured into any deal and always bear in mind your financial limitations. If you follow the advice given on this video, you'll feel confident both when buying and selling a used car. When you buy in a car, Britain's favourite papa is Auto Trader. Auto Trader. Auto Trader. When you're buying a car, Britain's favorite by far is Auto Trader. Auto Trader. Auto Trader!